Uh, Ezra Spire, uh, Spear, I'm sorry, is here. He's vice president uh, of product and software for OMC, the other machine company. Hello, Ezra. Hello, it's thanks great for to having me. Uh, this is so freaking cool. But I am not a maker like Father Robert is. So we're going to let Father Robert ask you the tough questions. Oh, All yeah. I can say is this is cool. I'm, this is a, a desktop three... CDC. It looks like a 3D printer, but it's it a CNC. Like a, it looks like a 3D printer, but it's a CNC machine. It's Com a, you computer? It stands for Computer Numerical Control. Okay. And these are in every factory around the world that's making metal parts yeah. and things like that. That's yeah. what they use to make the cases of iPhones and MacBooks and all those sorts of good things. And basically the way that it works is you put in a piece of material, so wood or plastic or metal, and then it uses a spinning bit, sort of like a drill bit, to uh, mill away the material that you don't want. So it's if a 3D printer makes things layer by layer in an additive way, this is subtractive. Ah, yeah. Now, you know, a, so a lot of people think, oh, it's kind of like a 3D printer, but CNC predated 3D printing by quite Quite a while. some time. Yeah. And in fact, in industry, in the world of real manufacturing, it's used much, much more than 3D printing. Right. Exactly. Well, you, you mentioned Apple. The iPhone is, mm -hmm. a, is a milled, mm -hmm. uh, solid aluminum case that they CNC drilled out, right? Exactly. They, they emptied out. So I love the idea of having it on my desktop. Now we should warn people, uh, it's not a hundred bucks. It's no. how much? This one is uh, the Othermill Pro, which we just launched this spring, is uh, three thousand one hundred ninety-nine. That sounds like a lot, but if you if you look at CNC milling, that's really expensive. So that's actually sure. very affordable. Sure. I and mean, most CNC mills are tens or even yeah. hundreds of thousands of yeah. dollars. And what we tried to do with the Othermill Pro is to focus on small parts that are really precise. So oftentimes, you know, even if you were a factory and could afford a huge mill, mm -hmm. you're making big things, and this is for small things. What kind of tolerances are you We're doing? talking about a thousandth of an inch. Wow. Okay. Wow. No, but, I, but I have to ask this, because sure. our, our, our audience is pretty tech savvy, yeah. and a lot of them are going to say, this looks a lot like a 3D printer. Sure. You've got NEMA 17 stepper yep. motors, you've got some sort of controller underneath mm -hmm. that's converting a slice into the actions of the motors. Mm -hmm. They And they'd think, well, why don't I just put a Dremel tool on the bottom <laughs> of where the hot end goes yeah. for a 3D printer, That's and right. I could have something for $1,000. Sure, you go what ahead What makes this so expensive? I would say, um, to, to address the specific question of why can't you just use a Dremel, um, it's vibration, rigidity, and run out. And so that's a bit technical, but basically what we need is we need that bit that we're spinning to stay in the same place. And Dremels, yeah. even though you can't see it with your eye, is wiggling back and forth. And so if you're trying to make, say, a circuit board that has a 6 mil trace in space, or something that's really precise, that's going to totally destroy, destroy everything that you've made. And, and, so, and I have a visual answer. This is a wooden Lego block. Now, if you've right. ever tried to 3D print a Lego block, you, can't. you don't have the precision. Mm -mm. You don't have the detail. This is exact. You, these work with regular Legos. And what I love about these Lego blocks, these were sent to us by a customer, Andy Wilson, who didn't have a whole lot of experience with CNC when he started. He this was his taught first? himself. This oh, wasn't his wow. first project, but he actually has done a bunch of instructables nice. and a bunch of other things. So, so. You, you can 3D print Lego blocks, right. but they would never do that. They wouldn't exactly. fit together the perfectly. Are never right. 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 And you know, one of the, the challenges with a CNC mill like this is that you're milling from the top. So you, you mm. can't, unlike a 3D printer, you know, 3D printers, you can't have overhangs sort of you're only milling from one direction and so he actually had to mill this in two steps you yeah, know the course. top and the bottom yeah, that separately. Makes sense. Yeah. it all lines up it does it's perfect it's amazing now could i take say an stl file that mm -hmm. i used for a 3d printer and then just move it over to this using a different slicing program uh kind of it's kind a, of. the world of cnc is a, is a little bit behind the world of 3d printing in the software workflow. Oh, okay. and i can show you um when we do the demo but uh, in, in this case, you need to use a kind of software called CAM. And so basically, you take your STL file or your step file, and you have to convert it into tool paths. And tool path or paths are just the, the you know, geometry that the, that the bit is going to cut out. And the reason why that you have to do this yourself is that the machine doesn't know what kind of material you're using or what bit you're using. Right. With a 3D printer, there's usually it's one or two kinds. It's, it's always PLA, filament. it's ABS. It's, it's ABS. You just choose yeah. one or the other. Um, but with uh, a, a mill, you can choose a eighth inch bit, you can choose a tiny one one hundredth inch bit. If you try to cut with a tiny bit into a piece of aluminum and it's going too fast, you're just going to break it. So. Because for me, I think that would be, that's, that's the holy grail mm -hmm. of printing, which would be 
fast prototype something, right. something on a 3D printer. Mm -hmm. Once it looks the way I want it, right. then I put it on the more expensive right. machine and I make that final cut out of mm -hmm. copper or exactly. wood or whatever it's exactly. going to be. So a lot of our customers use the Other Mill Pro to make circuit boards. Mm. And if you've ever made a circuit board by hand, yeah. you know that it's not a very pleasant it's, experience. It's kind of cancery. You get, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you actually can get cancer from yeah. the chemicals you need so to etch. These, so these are plastic boards. They have metal on top, copper conductive metal on top. And the idea is That's you, so you cool. want to etch the copper where you don't want it to conduct. And you would right. do that with chemicals in the past, right? Right, yeah, you'd put, it's light sensitive. So mm -hmm. you would put the trace down of, uh, of what you want and then you mm -hmm. would shine light through it. Oh. And then you would give it a chemical bath and wherever the light landed, it would it would eat away. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So in this case, I just take this and I go ahead and I, I tell this to right. dig through the copper down to the substrate mm -hmm and that becomes the, so my blank space. It's almost like engraving them. Yeah. Exactly, and so what, you, what you're holding right now is what we call the Other Duino, which is a <laughs> open source design that we made that is a clone of an Arduino, so you can make your own Arduino. So I actually have the uh, PCB layout open on, on my computer screen, but what's so great about oh, this is cool. you don't have to do the cam. So our right. software takes the Eagle board file or the Gerber's, just the normal design files that you're using, and does all of the feeds and speeds and tools and stuff for you, so it's really easy. Now, this, this was also a bane of mine. The these little through holes mm -hmm. because that was always something I had to drill out afterwards. Yeah. And, and it was horrible if you did a, a design and then you messed it up because oh, you right. drilled it out poorly, you right. cracked the board. Right. Did, did you have to post-process this? No, it just comes automatically. So it does the holes for you? Oh yeah, oh, okay. very, very So very you're easy. engraving and you're drilling. Drilling, you're doing all that stuff all together. And so for us, you know, this is sort of an Arduino, and sort of a, a maker kind of project, but a lot of professionals use this too. That's why I call it the Other Mill Pro. When we were going to design the Other Mill, we had to- Is that real speed? Is that, or uh, is that sped up at that all? That was, I think that was real speed. Wow. Um, the well, why don't we do something while yeah, we're talking? Yeah, totally. Well, so we can actually see the real speed. Absolutely. Well, let me show you. Aren't um, these gears amazing? Yeah, I know, so that's, that's the, the, the precision you have, and the <laughs> materials you're working with. It's not PLA. This is metal. Mm -hmm. That's brass. brass. I have some uh, aluminum over on the table. This is one of my favorites. This is a wood inlay. So it's uh, wow. wood, um, and then that's mother of pearl, like you'd use for a fret. Oh, that's gorgeous. Guitar. So they engraved out the mm -hmm. the wood for the mother of pearl. Right, and then engraved the mother of pearl, and then cut the mother of pearl to fit it. And there's no glue. It's just uh, holding in there by... That's a really good ideas, example of where that precision yeah. really comes in. Hey, so what yeah. are you going to do for us So today? today what I'm going to do is to show you something really fast and simple. Um, we're going to do a uh, twit engraved dog tag. Okay. you so got a little anodized aluminum. Endless aluminum. Like, all right. So um, what I've got... Um, what I want to show you is sort of the whole process of design to manufacturing. So on my screen, I'm using a piece of software called Autodesk Fusion 360. Okay. It's a yep. really popular, really fantastic free for hobbyists, a 3D design program. So what I did here is I modeled sort of this rectangle, which is the shape of the dog tag, and I loaded in a SVG file of the logo, and I placed it on here sort of where I want it to go. But now I can switch over to CAM, this is what we were talking about mm -hmm. before, and we can set up tool paths. And so what I did is I uh, told it sort of the size of the material that I have, I told it what tool I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use one of these really sharp engraving tools, and set up an engraving tool path. Um, I can go in here, you can see I, I'm telling it how fast I want the spindle to turn and what feed rates to use and so forth, and I'm telling it to mill down just two thousandth of an right, inch, so right. just a little wow. tiny you bit. You just want to break through the, uh, the anodized layer. Exactly. I just, want to, I just want that metal color mm. below to come through. And this looks a little bit complicated, but you know I taught this to myself, and most of our customers are able to learn it with uh, Autodesk documentation on our own. It's not that hard. By the way, a great way to give this to a teenager, and he'll be able to get a job. Right. <laughs> totally. Right? Exactly. He'll know how to do I'm, uh, you know, sophisticated working, machine milling. That's good. That's I'm, good skill. I'm working on a little Etsy side business. Yeah. Uh, as well. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. No kidding. So I'm just saving uh, what's called G-code from Oh, Autodesk. yeah, of course. From yeah. Fusion 360, and G-Code is just, it's, it is like a programming code mm -hmm. from the 50s, basically, and it just says, turn on the motor, go here, go here. It's just simple geometry. And that's what the machine understands. And that's what the machine understands. Yeah, that's the slicing. So because exactly. at some point you have to turn the model into instructions, and right. that's what G-Code does. So now I popped open other plan, which is the software that my company makes. Ooh. And the first thing that I'm going to do is home the machine. So this just pulls all the axes back to home, make sure it knows. Mm -hmm. what so you're controlling works. the machine directly through yeah, other plan. Through other plan. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my file I just saved. So I'll pull up the twit G-Code file and tell it which tool I want to use. And you can see here on the preview, it's a little bit hard to see right now, but um, you can see that uh, it's showing the, 
the location where it's going to be milling. And what's so unique about other plan is if you've ever tried to use a mill before, you've seen these huge panels with numbers and right, letters and right. keyboard, and mm -hmm. it's just it's really complicated. And you got to take a you know take a course to learn how to use it. And if you get it wrong, well, oof, you don't want to pay the bill for that. But with this, it's really simple. So I've loaded the file. I've preset the size of the material. I actually have one of these blank dog tags just taped down to the machine, just using this really awesome double stick tape. I've never had <laughs> as Super much high tech. That's all you tape. need, huh? Yeah. This is better than duct tape. <laughs> it's my favorite. Um, How many? Uh, well, go ahead and start. And sure. Then, uh, um, and then finally, I'm going to locate the tool. So right now, I have a engraving tool inserted into the machine. So as it moves in the software, it's actually moving exactly. in, in real and world. And what I want to do is I'm, I, I would replace the tool, and I want to locate it. So what that means, it's going to lower down to the top of the bend, um, and when it touches, it'll complete electrical circuit. And it'll zero oh, okay. it out. And so unless you do that, the machine doesn't know where the tool is. So it's it's is really calibrating. It's calibrating, calibrating itself. Look at that. So it's really just lowers down. So it knows exactly where the platform is. Exactly. And if you if you have it miscalibrated at all, that becomes your your margin of error. Well, we're talking about two thousandths yeah. of an inch here. So if you're off by even a tiny bit, it could destroy your part or or break your bed. Does it have some sort of protection so you don't accidentally drill down through the bed? We just added a new feature that basically simulates your job and gives you a warning that that's going to happen. So <laughs> good good yes. thinking. Yeah. All right, I'm going to hit go. It'll be a little bit loud. Should we be um, wearing glasses? No, we, no, no, no. We it's probably got, should, but it's you know got what, safety Leo? windows. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's all sealed in. Okay, yeah, good. it's all sealed. It's safe. So can hear what uh, what tools does it, does it come with? Uh, it comes with a oh, one thirty awesome. second inch flatted mill and a one sixty fourth inch flatted mill. These are standard engineering parts, though. You can just buy them from us or from McMaster Car. Or oh, all you right. Like you don't have to get your particular. No. Oh, that's nice. That's really fast. And these last how long? Uh, it depends on what you're milling. If you're milling aluminum, it's going to take a really long time. Uh, it might go do a little bit faster. So you can see here. Um, it's really doing it fast. That's awesome. It's going fast. <laughs> Anybody who's used to oh my goodness. 3D printing yeah. is expecting, you know, we'll cut, we'll get back to you in a month. That's it. it? <laughs> wow. wow. So that's it. We're done. You now, could have an Etsy business. You really could. Uh, fast yeah. Up. If you look at it though, it didn't go all the way down. So this is one of those cases where you just measure, and sometimes right, you know right. the tolerances don't quite don't quite uh, line up. But, um, but we can redo it. We can redo, we can it, redo right? it, and it's super because easy because it's just a little it just deeper. Mm -hmm. Takes time. Takes thirty yeah. seconds. So that's yeah. that's how it works. And so whether you're doing a, a circuit board or you're doing a complicated metal this part for a new fun. device. Uh, I mean, look, right now I breadboard all my Arduino mm -hmm. circuits because I don't like printing boards, but. This would this be faster than And Red then board. you'd have PCBs. Oh, yeah. gosh. And yes. it'd be more, more stable, more mm -hmm. reliable. Uncle Leo. Fewer bugs. <laughs> nope. No way. Don't even ask. Nope. Mm -mm. Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Don't even ask. <laughs> I want one. That is awesome. That is Thank really, you. really. Is it available now? It's available now. This is a brand new model, and we'll be shipping in about ten weeks. Okay. So, so you're pre-ordering now. Pre-ordering. Uh, we make them in Berkeley, California, just nice. across the bay, and um, we're shipping them as fast as we possibly can. Wow. That is. I just. It's so exciting. Uh, the world we live in, and boy, if you look at like I, you, I said buttons. They really. I meant buttons. These are metal buttons. Uh, I want to replace all the buttons on my shirt with. With metal buttons, look at that. The only negative I can see is it's now making me look at my 3D printers with disdain. I know. It's like, oh, I know. you print plastic? Plastic. Well, but you Whatever. can put your 3D printed parts in here, and nobody. I know so, exactly. You know, a lot of people sort of say, "Oh, what, how do you feel about 3D printers? You must hate 3D printers." And no, of course not. 3D printers are amazing. They're but a great prototype this, device. This, well, and this opens up a whole other set of possibilities. Yeah. Well, they I, work together I could great. see making 3D objects that then get. R rooted oh, out. so that's what's happening here. These are milled 3D mm. objects. Right, exactly. Here, so why this don't is you hand this me? This is half of a yo-yo. Oh, and this you know what? It's so much more precise and clean mm -hmm. than the 3D so original. That's half a yo-yo. That's only the yo. That's the yo. That's the yo. <laughs> Here's the yo. <laughs> There's but the other feel yo. how clean that is, I know, right? right? You can actually get the files for this on Instructables. There, there are no 3D printers that will print this smooth. Mm -hmm. right, so you print out. it, uh, you know, kind of normally, and then you just refine it a little bit with the uh, with the other. Sure. Well, that Varying was that was fully milled. On this is fully image. milled, yep. so it's just a chunk mm -hmm. of plastic. Mm -hmm. See, uh, this would change the way I do my design because yeah. right now I assume that the tolerance is going to be slightly off, so right. I, I kind of enlarge my prints right. a tiny bit. Right. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have to do that. If, mm -hmm. if I could say three, three millimeters is going to be exactly three millimeters, then I print exactly the part that I need. A lot to be said for precision. <sighs> Ezra Spear, thank you so much, VP Product and Software for Other Machine Company. What's your website? Othermachine.co. Othermachine. Well, that's easy. Othermachine.co. Thanks so much for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.